What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today I'm going to do a follow-up of the latest video that I tried the 10 700k fanless. And today I have the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X and I'm going to try some settings to see if I can play at 1080p 144 Hz. With the Intel was very easy, I just had to limit the boost to 50 watts and I was able to reach my goal. To be able to boost, uh, to have some boost in when the, the game was not so demanding, so I was able to, to boost the single core performance at 4.7 around that, and to have like an old core around 4 gigahertz. With this uh, Ryzen, I really had a tough time, since I tried with uh, the Precision Boost Overdrive in, in the BIOS and in Ryzen Master, to limit the boost using a TDP that was lower. But uh, doing that, uh, I had some issue in the game that the CPU wasn't boosting enough and the GPU was uh, having an error to, to the driver that uh, hanged the system. I tried for many hours, but I wasn't able to find a setting that uh, allows me to use the boost, but with a lower TDP. So I had to abandon that way to go with the manual overclocking, manual voltage and manual frequency. I end up using 4.1 GHz uh, all core and 1.1 volt for World of Warcraft to be able to, to play it in a 40 man ride. But unfortunately, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I tried uh, everything XMP on, memory tuning, memory at stock, uh, but I wasn't able to find the way to make this system run funless in a AAA game. But it's something that you will see now. If you didn't see the video of uh, the test that I did with the Intel 10700K, I suggest you to check it out. I put a card right here, so you can click there, check that video. Uh, you can see the, the, the power consumption, the temperature, the frame rate, and then you can come back here to compare. The base system that I'm going to use for this test is uh, similar to the one that I use with Intel. So we have the same GPU, the Zotac Amp RTX 2080, the non-TI version and uh, a high-end motherboard, in this case I have a Asus Crosshair 8. As for the memory kit, I have a Ballistic Elite uh, 3600, but it's tuned to 3800C14 with uh, very tight uh, tertiary timings, sub-timings and everything. So on the memory side, uh, I'm pushing really hard uh, this Ryzen. In fact, I'm using a, a better configuration than with Intel and uh, I have an EVGA Supernova 1600G2. Uh, For the CPU cooler, I'm using the Noctua NH-U12A. So the same that I used with Intel. Again, I'm using, I'm trying to use the same component that I used in the previous test. And uh, of course, without the fun. Okay, we are now with the same test as before, the 9900K. The ride is full and uh, we are monitoring the FPS. So now we have 95, the low are great. So we have 27.1% low. The game is a bit, uh, we have stuttering and we have 200 and something, 230 watts. And uh, well, so far as you can see here, we are stuttering a lot. So let's say that is not a good start. Especially if they don't hear me. Okay, so we are very full in the right group. We are averaging 8 FPS. A bit low, since with the Intel we was uh, at 120, if I recall correctly. And we had a very nice 1% and 0.1% lows. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Uh, that worst group ever. So I think uh, this will prove that um, at the same uh, power consumption, more or less, uh, well, we are actually 20 20 watt less, uh, but uh, we are 76 degrees. So I was really unable to to play with more frequency since now we are approaching even almost 80 degrees 
Now, as you can see, we have 144 FPS, that is normal. But we are 76 degrees, approaching 80s, if I keep playing. And the average was uh, much worse. So this test, unfortunately, I have to call it a fail. This we are now 80 degrees, 78, and we are pushing 230, 220 watts. Now it's time for Tomb Raider, and I'm playing the same scene of uh, the last test that I did. It's now five minutes, more or less, that I'm in this scenario. Uh, we are approaching 90 degrees. We are actually 30 watts more than the Intel. In the Intel was averaging like uh, 3.8 gigahertz as a base clock uh, and with boost uh, up to 4.7. Uh, here I had to, to down clock the CPU at uh, 4 gigahertz and 1.050 volts to be able to get the temperature to a decent level, but it seems that we are more than 90 degrees. So Yes, I think that that's 30 watts more that I'm currently drawing from the power outlet, so it's the GPU plus CPU combined, is a bit too much since, uh, as you can see now, we have 91 degrees, 92 degrees. It's fine that I'm at 120 FPS and actually we have 10 FPS more for the lows than the Intel and now I crashed. <laughs> So at this point, I think I have to down clock the CPU more to be able to sustain the temperature. So I will try to 3.8 with one volt. All right, so now I have uh, the CPU at uh, 3.8 gigahertz, one volt. But it seems that, uh, well, the lows are a bit bad since we have 57 FPS of 1.1% lows. 81 FPS at 1% lows, and the temperature is rising again. We are now at 87 degrees. The total power consumption is 265, so we are talking about uh, 20 watts uh, more than Intel. And of course, we are overeating, so with 88 degrees, once we go above 90, and it will go above 90 soon, you're going to crash again. So, well, as I told you, it's very hard to make this 3800X uh, uh, run funless and also harder to get good performance out of it since I think to be able to do funless, I think I have to reduce the frequency much, much lower. And as well, memory tuning uh, doesn't really help if I, if I use a, a slower configuration. Now I have the CPU at default with the limit in watts of 60. So I'm limiting via precision boost overdrive the total power consumption at 60 watts for the CPU. And the total system at the outlet is not now at 275. So we are now at 25 watts more than the Intel at the outlet and I'm reaching more than 90 degrees. Also the the lows aren't so great, so we have more or less the same 1% low, but a bit 10%, uh, well, yes, we have like 10 FPS less in the 0.1% lows than the Intel. And I'm pretty sure that if I keep playing that 91 is going to 92, 93, and then I'm going to crash. I thought that uh, by lowering the memory overclock to the XMP, which is very loose, I was going to gain something in... Uh, in temperature but unfortunately it's not like that so now i'm pretty sure i'm going to crash so this is not a tactic that is going to work since as you can see the cpu is throttling a lot we are going to base frequency all right guys it seems that uh, intel was not so power hungry and hot uh, as the internet said and on the contrary it uh, was harder for me to 
have this uh, AMD 3800X uh, run fanless. And in fact, uh, this is a very nice chip. It's a golden sample. It's one of the fastest uh, Ryzen 3800X uh, on hardware bot. So it's a very lucky chip. But uh, even if it's a lucky chip that requires less voltage, I wasn't able to run it uh, fanless without having a lot of uh, power consumption, actually more than the Intel, and uh, running very hot. So I don't know what to say. I'm a bit uh, surprised by the result. I was thinking that was a walk in the park, since uh, usually Ryzen are very power efficient and with a good thermal. You know that I don't pick side. And uh, this video is only for fun, so it's a very unlikely situation. Nobody's going to, to put a CPU without any fans. So it's just about to discuss uh, that the internet say that Intel are super power angry, they are run hot, uh, it's an oven, but sometimes people assume something and we all end up in a very bad misconception of the facts. The facts are this, I was able to run the Intel fanless with a very nice performance, especially in World of Warcraft. And with this uh, Ryzen, the, the Zen 2, is not that efficient. Uh, okay, I, it's not to run fanless, but we just prove that with the same power consumption at the outlet with the same GPU, this runs much hotter than the other, and uh, the Ryzen have less performance than the Intel. Plus, it's running hotter. This is the facts, guys. But now, I really want to know what you think about that. So write me in the comment or join my Discord server and let's have a chat. And uh, as always, you know what to do. Like the video if you like it, subscribe for more because I have a lot of more interesting videos for you, and see you in the next one.